The random pattern of fibres can be seen clearly in this spun bond geotextile. In this cross-section of a two-layered staple fibre geotextile, you can clearly see the individual fibres that have been needled through both layers. They hold the mat together, both within and across the layers. This schematic shows the spun bond process. Raw materials are sourced as pallets and stored in silos. The pellets are melted and then extruded into fibres. The fibres are laid down to form a loose mat, which is then needled together and compressed to create the finished geotextile. The geotextile is then rolled and wrapped, ready for dispatch. Let's take a moment to look at each of these steps. Pallets of raw material are supplied in bags. Here are the individual pallets. In this example, polyester chips are used as the raw material. The chips are stored in silos and fed into the extrusion process. The polyester chips are melted and extruded into thin continuous fibres. The fibres are laid down in a random manner to form a loose mat. Boards of needles are punched into the fibres to entangle them. The needle punching compresses the mat and increases its strength. The finished product is rolled and wrapped in UV resistant material for outdoor storage. Engineers need to be aware that the strength of a geotextile is not necessarily the same in both directions. This is a function of the manufacturing process. Often the machine direction is stronger than the cross machine direction. Product data sheets should specify the strength in both directions. In applications where the load is multi-directional, such as a highway or landfill base, the engineer must design to the weaker direction. The machine direction is along the rolled out product. The cross machine direction is across the roll. Raw materials. Geotextiles are generally made from either polyester or polypropylene. It is therefore important to understand how the polymer will perform in the chosen application. For example, an embankment uses a high strength geotextile as a reinforcement layer in its foundation. The high-strength geotextile will be woven or knitted from polyester yarns. These yarns have the required stress-strain relationship to support the reinforcing function. Engineers should also consider the polymer's chemical properties. For example, geotextiles used to contain landfill or mining waste may need to contend with extreme pH or temperature. Geotextiles in coastal structures need to resist the effects of intense sunlight over many years. Geotextiles used in road pavements need to withstand extreme temperatures as the bitumen is being laid. Consider Polyester is more suitable for low pH, say less than 4. Polypropylene is more suitable for high pH, say greater than 10. Polyester is better suited for high temperatures, whereas polypropylene starts to degrade above 70 degrees Celsius. Polyester has a natural resistance to sunlight. 
Additives are needed to increase polypropylene resistance. Product Specification and Selection The selection of the correct geotextile for the application is critical to the long-term performance of the structure into which it is incorporated. Each function has its key performance requirements. For example, reinforcement requires consideration of high strength, low elongation and long-term creep properties. Drainage and filtration require consideration of flow rate and pore size. Separation requires consideration of strength and elongation. When selecting this non-woven geotextile as a separation layer in a highway project, the CBR of the sub-base was considered. This determines how strong the geotextile needs to be. The lower the CBR, the greater strength required. Geotextile selection also needed to consider the combination with imported aggregate. Greater strength is required for larger, more angular aggregate. In this drainage application, the geotextile is selected on the basis of flow rate and pore size. These properties need to be considered in relation of the surrounding soil and filtration aggregate. They must be selected and designed in a system, not individually. This non-woven geotextile is being used to protect the geomembrane beneath from puncture. You can see highly angular drainage aggregate being spread in a thick layer. Therefore, this geotextile is also selected on its strength properties. It needs to be stronger than in our highway example because it supports a large, single-grade aggregate. This high-strength woven geotextile is being used as a reinforcing layer under an embankment. Selection is determined by the bearing capacity of the subgrade height of the embankment to be built, and the load it is to carry. In this case, the geotextile was selected on its filtration properties, such as pore size and flow rate. The strength also needs to be sufficient to tolerate the roughness of the subgrade. UV resistance was also an important factor for selection, as this geotextile will be exposed to sunlight for several years until the tailings dam fills. Once a suitable geotextile has been selected, the engineer must specify the key attributes and assess the suitability of products submitted for approval. Different suppliers will present performance data in different ways. The engineer must interpret this data and compare options. Geotextile data sheets most often describe their performance in terms of minimum average roll values or typical values. These utilize different statistical methods. <laughs>